head for the auditorium. Yes, sir. been here before uh, for you not to take uh, a quick tour through the museum. Also, I urge you to try to pick up one of these by the information desk that shows you what we have going on at the museum, and I hope you'll return as a visitor. Um, it is a great pleasure, again, to be hosting this event and to be introducing uh, the president of the Long, Long Island City Partnership, Gail Bass. Thank you, Carl, and thank you so much for hosting us in this magnificent museum and wonderful space. We're just very excited for you. Welcome, everybody, to the Queen's Arts Institution Breakfast. We want to begin by thanking all of our sponsors, because as you all know, without the sponsorship, we just cannot do events like this. So thank you so much to Kaufman Astoria Studios, Panera Bread Catering, Mount Sinai Hospital Queens, Signature Bank, and to our media co-sponsor, LIQ City. And at this point, I would like to ask our very esteemed council member, Jimmy Van Bremer, to come to the podium. We're so fortunate that Jimmy in the city council is responsible for all sorts of policies and assisting in funding for the culturals. So Jimmy, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it great to be at the Museum of Moving Image? Oh, it's an amazing institution. And now the party can start. Mr. Soon has arrived. Um, first of all, I want to say, on as uh, gloomy a morning as this is, um, uh, what better place to be in than this uh, to look at perhaps the brightest um, curtain in the history of New York City um, uh, to uh, make us all a little bit happier uh, this morning. And um, I want to thank uh, the Long Island City Partnership, uh, Gail and Dan and the whole team, for uh, recognizing, not just today, but really you've recognized for many, many years, uh, the vital, vital connection between uh, culture and the arts, our institutions and organizations, and our economy, both local and citywide. Uh, you don't have to look any further than the avenue uh, right in front of this building uh, to realize the power of, of culture uh, and the arts in, in driving a neighborhood to a place that it hadn't been before. And obviously, Mr. Kaufman uh, and uh, and this museum spurred a renaissance that continues to this day where we can have a Panera Bread. So that's a little shout out for Panera Bread, right? Um, uh, I'm no longer doing carbs, so I'm not doing Panera as much as I used to, but uh, um, uh, we want to thank them. But seriously, uh, I grew up uh, right around the corner, and I remember riding my uh, bike with my sister uh, up and down these avenues. Uh, in the late 70s, and it looked like an entirely different uh, neighborhood. And uh, uh, this place and this uh, museum, uh, as well as Kaufman, obviously, have really, really changed the landscape of this part of Astoria. And uh, that kind of transformation has gone on all over Long Island City uh, with Silver Cup and others uh, driving uh, the Renaissance there. And of course, in Sunnyside and Woodside, uh, there are uh, similar efforts, 
and Dutch kills, there are very, very exciting things happening in Dutch kills uh, with respect to the arts and some of the art institutions. And uh, we're going to hear from some of the uh, larger ones, but I want to uh, also recognize and shout out some of our smaller uh, organizations uh, with uh, smaller budgets, but that do equally important work and uh, who, who spur uh, business in the local economies, uh, just as some of our larger institutions uh, do. I know that Five Napkin Burger across the street and Studio Square and uh, Starbucks down the street, uh, I see uh, all of them benefit from all of the people who are coming to this museum. Uh, my staff and I have an annual retreat every year. We had it uh, this year here, and it was a Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, it was an afternoon. Uh, there was a, a fire alarm, uh, Carl, um, and, uh, and we all had to pour out uh, in the middle of the day, uh, one or two o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon in the middle of the summer, and there were hundreds of people on the sidewalk uh, who had left this museum. And, uh, and they all poured into Starbucks, and they all poured into Five Neck Converter. And I thought, you know, this is a powerful thing that's happening here. And the money that we invested in this museum, the expansion and the transformation of this museum, has a direct impact on the economy <coughs> of this neighborhood and this city. And the money we invest in culture and the arts is money well worth spent in our city reaps the benefits for generations to come. So we need to invest more in culture and the arts, not less. And obviously that's one of the uh, things that we're doing as uh, Chair of the Cultural Affairs. And though uh, all of our organizations and agencies obviously just got another letter from uh, uh, the Office of Management and Budget asking to tighten bells, I think it's worth saying that in the budget we adopted uh, in June, uh, culture and the arts uh, received essentially the same funding as last year. Uh, uh, very, very minimal reductions. Uh, uh, few areas did as well in the budget as culture and the arts this year, and I'm very, very proud uh, uh, to have led that effort in the City Council. So I want to um, uh, applaud you for, for not focusing on the budget today, <laughs> especially because I'm in the room, but, uh, um, but instead focusing on, on uh, what we're doing, what we can do, uh, uh, talking about the ways in which uh, uh, culture and the arts and business work together. Uh, there are so many folks, leaders in the room, who, who get this, uh, and who understand uh, uh, how they each benefit one another. Uh, small businesses uh, survive to some extent uh, if they're located next to our institutions and organizations, uh, including the smaller ones, and, uh, uh, and the large ones certainly uh, drive home. And uh, I also want to uh, say, uh, because uh, Tom Finkelpearl was kind enough to give me this, uh, this ribbon um, uh, celebrating immigrants in New York, and, and I think that's one of the things that uh, uh, QMA does so well and so many others do well, which is to recognize uh, the diversity of the city of New York, the diversity specifically in Queens, uh, and to incorporate that into the work that you're showing uh, and to, to encourage those artists to come forward. And it's one of the things that, that we're talking about uh, in my committee and the city council, and that is making sure that the, the help is getting to those emerging uh, cultural organizations and artists uh, to get them into the funding streams uh, and to and to really um, awaken that fire and, and the last thing I want to say thank you I think that uh, point is uh, uh, Mark Crawford Levitt who is my neighbor so um, <laughs> uh, I just want to say uh, uh, two things one is you know Queens uh, obviously you know I love Queens uh, more than anything in the world and I like the borough too but um, uh, <laughs> It's a little early, it's a little early, but uh, I thought I'd just test to see who was listening to me. But, um, but I do want to say, you know, we say it all the time, I say it all the time, you don't have to go to Manhattan to see incredible uh, first-rate performances, artwork, um, and, and, and institutions. They're right here uh, in Queens, and so many of them are in my district. <laughs> Uh, which is good for both you and I. Um, and, and it's a great thing. The one thing that we need to do better is to make sure that everybody who comes to this city knows what's here and knows how to get here. And so uh, we need to do a better job at the airports and on the 7 train, making sure that people know where our cultural institutions and organizations and galleries 
uh, and artists are and directing them here uh, because this is the place they should be coming. We have all of these new hotels. Some people love them, some people don't. Um, uh, but uh, we don't want them coming, staying in Long Island City just to go into Manhattan. They should come uh, east and make sure that they are seeing all of the wonderful institutions uh, that we have here. So I'm proud to uh, lead the fight for culture and the arts uh, and for Long Island City. And I look forward to hearing our distinguished uh, panel. Uh, they are each uh, doing amazing work and their institutions are, are just great and I'm big fans of all of them. So Gail and Dan, I want to thank you so much and thank you all for laughing at that joke. Thank you. <laughs> test, test. So what we'll do is I will briefly introduce our various panelists, then I have several questions for them to which they will be able to respond individually or in a group. And then after going through a few questions, we'll have time for some of yours. So, a little bit about our panelists. Tom Finkelpearl became executive director of the Queens Museum of Art in 2002. Uh, he is uh, working now on an expansion to double its size. Tom worked at PS1 for two stints, first organizing 15 exhibitions during the 1980s, been returning as deputy director in 1999. Uh, in between those stints, he worked uh, as director of the Percent for Art program at the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs and as executive director of program at the Skohegan School of Painting and Sculpture. <clears throat> he has a BA from Princeton and an MFA from Hunter College. Carl Goodman is executive director of Museum of the Moving Image. He has worked at the museum for more than 20 years, serving in many capacities, overseeing all public programming, education, and collections initiatives, and organizing many, many exhibitions. He was previously a composer of music for film, theater, and dance. Amy Howe is the administrative director of the Isamu Noguchi Foundation and Guard Museum. And Amy has been with the organization since 1986, and worked for the artist Isama Noguchi until his death in 1988. She has played a significant role in the formation and growth of the Noguchi Museum, handling its marketing and external <coughs> affairs. Amy also serves as president of Long Island City Cultural Alliance, which I'm sure we'll hear more about. <laughs> Ms. Howe holds a BA from Hunter College and an MBA from the Zicklin School of Business at Baroque. And Peter Katz is the Chief Operating Officer of MoMA PS1, handling all of its daily operations in financial planning. Peter has served as Finance Director for the New Gallery, Budget Director of Brooklyn's Polytechnic University, Finance Manager at the Museum of Modern Art, and Financial Analyst at the Guggenheim Museum. And he holds an MBA from NYU's Stern School of Business. So, considering that we are having some economically challenging times, I'd like to ask members of the panel individually, what innovations are you using to attract new audiences and raise funds? Perhaps um, Amy first, and then 